using async await will enhance your code structure and enable better code design. If you used Unity before, you may be familiar with coroutines. They enable you to do non-blocking operations, like downloading a texture from the internet while your game is still interactable. But coroutines are not like normal c -sharp tasks. You can't have a return type or out parameter from them, so this will lead you to use evil global variables. And if you use the normal c -sharp tasks instead, you will return to any threads after awaiting, and the problem with that is Unity's main loop is single-threaded, and Unity types and things work on this thread, so when you return to another thread, you can't use Unity code inside it. Thankfully, there is an open source plugin called Unitask, and it is a lifesaver. Unitask replaces system.threading.tasks for Unity's context. They can flatten your code and save you from callbacks. Download the package from GitHub and import it into Unity. Let's do a real-life example. We will load a game object using the addressable assets. This can be any big resource that you load over the internet or anything. Let's try Unity's traditional way, coroutines. Instantiate the game object using gates key. I can't use it in the next lines because this is just a handle for the loading operation itself, so I have to await it using the yield return keywords. Now after awaiting, I can't access the object from the handle, so I will have to store the handle, then await it, and access the game object via handle.result. But wait, we can't have return values from coroutines, so I will have to create a global variable for only this specific matter. We can call the start coroutine to fire get boring function and forget about it. But what if we want to make some operations on the cube the moment it is loaded, for example loading it multiple times and use it for different situations so I will have to wait for it to be loaded and I can try the code inside the coroutine itself so to await it I will have to use it in another coroutine and DL the get boring coroutine. And this is fairly possible by a simple trick which is converting the type of the void into IE numerator. After loading the object, we can store it in a local variable and since the global variable holds the same reference for the game object, it is prone to change, so we will change the global variable to null. And this is not clean as I think and uh, seems like we are misusing the language itself. So is there any another solution for this mess? Okay, let's view this function. Take a look at the signature. The return type is an operations that will have a game object result if we await it for it. Async keyword tells the compiler that this function is awaitable and we can use the await keyword inside it and as you see we can return the game object in a single line as we do with non-async functions now how can we use this function luckily we can change the signature of the start function to replace void with unitask void and inside it await the get clean function and store the result directly in a local variable. The compiler is complaining because we need to make the start method async. The result is clean and doesn't differ much from normal blocking code. Sometimes you want to invoke an async method and don't want to wait for the result in the code. This is called fire and forget. To do this in unitask, just use forget at the end of the call and please throw any uncaught exceptions because otherwise exceptions will be silent. This enemy loop example creates a new enemy every 2 seconds, as long as the game is running. If you know that the async function doesn't have to be awaited by nature, that the caller doesn't expect an output use unitask void instead, which is more lightweight, it works with forget with no arguments. Note that, in both of these forgetting methods, 
the timeline in each will be just started. When the start function is done, the forgotten methods won't be done. They will be just started. You can also create a task using a factory, so you can have a wettable sequence inside a synchronous normal method. This makes life easier in many situations. Say we make a function to start a new game, where we create a new player and destroy it after the time is out. Now, let me ask you a question. Which line will be executed first? The debug game over or debug initiated? To understand this properly, think of two parallel timelines. One starts from unit task that create and the other starts from debug game initiated line. I hope you get it. The answer is game initiated is called first. I have forgotten to call forget function on the created unit task and in fact this is essential and will help you reason about this timeline idea. You can call new game now, which is a normal synchronous function. This was my first video. I hope you enjoy it. Your feedback is accountable, and I will reply to every comment. You can also tell me what to talk about in the next video. Your like will be helpful for me also. Thank you.